Hello everyone, uh, my name is Swagat and I'm going to talk to you about this poster which is called Quantum Gravity. So, uh, gravitation is, is one of the most familiar for, uh, forces that we feel in our day-to-day -day life. Uh, objects like fruits fall from the tree because of gravity. Uh, uh, the moon is rotating around Earth because of gravity. Earth and other planets are rotating around Sun because of gravity. Our universe is expanding and uh, it's dynamic. Uh, because of gravity <clears throat> so before talking about quantum theory of gravity let's first discuss about the classical theory of gravity the classical theory of gravity uh, comes in two packages uh, the first one the earlier version was by sir isaac newton and it's called newton's law of universal gravitation which says that uh, <clears throat> every massive particle in the universe attracts each other by a uh, attractive force which is gravity now, the, this, the strength of this force is uh, directly proportional to the product of the masses of the two objects and it's inversely proportional to the separation between the two objects. And uh, so this, this, this is the gravitational force in, in Newton's theory. You require a mass to have gravity. Second thing, gravity is always attractive. Third thing, the force between two objects would always fall as inverse distance square. And gravity is instantaneous in Newton's theory. In the sense that if if sun uh, vanishes today due to some some reason then earth will no, no longer continue to rotate around it in an ellipse but immediately as soon as the sun vanishes instantaneously earth will start moving uh, in one direction along a straight line so the the force is really instantaneous in newton's theory however in einstein's theory of relativity force is not uh, no information can travel faster than speed of light no particle can travel faster than speed of light so gravity cannot be instantaneous. Rather, in Einstein's theory, <clears throat> gravity comes because of the curvature of space-time. The presence of mass and energy uh, at any point in space-time curves the space-time. And in that curved space-time, if there is any object, it moves in the straightest possible path in the curved space-time, okay? in the shortest possible path in the curved uh, space. So the geometry is no more Euclidean flat geometry, but it's a curved geometry. So in Einstein's theory, gravity is not really a force, but a curvature of space-time. So, uh, another difference between Einstein's and Newton's theory is the fact that gravity is caused by mass as well as energy. So even a massless particle which has energy can cause gravity. This is not so in Newton's theory. Third thing is, it's not necessary that uh, the, the, the gravitational force between two objects exactly falls as one bar square. Even though at, at large distance, they do fall as one bar square, at small distance, the dependence actually changes. <clears throat> and gravity is no more instantaneous. So if we disturb the space time, then this disturbance traveled at the speed of light, not instantaneously. So that's the difference. Uh, <clears throat> these are the classical theory of gravity. And these, these theories are applicable to systems that are big, like planets, uh, moon, uh, galaxies, stars. Okay. However, apart from gravity, there are three other forces in nature. The first force, which is again very, very familiar to us, is uh, electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force between two charged particles is similar to like Newton's law of gravitation. The, the, the force is proportional to the product of two charges and it goes as the inverse square of the separation between them. Okay. However, uh, electromagnetic could be both attractive or could be repulsive. Especially, uh, for example, electric force <clears throat> between two like charges is repulsive and two opposite charges is attractive. Okay. Similarly, magnetism uh, is another interesting force which, which comes around because of the motion of charges. Okay. If, if charges are moving like a current in a wire, then magnetic force comes, comes to play. So electromagnetic force is important in our day-to-day -day life for lifting objects, for holding a pen, for seeing things, light. Similarly, there are other two forces, strong and weak forces. Strong force, force has to do with holding the nucleus together. Even though in, uh, inside the nucleus, there are protons which are positively charged particles, but they're not flying away from each other uh, because of their electric repulsion. The reason is because there is even a stronger attractive force, which is strong nuclear force, which is holding them together. Uh, the weak force has to do with decay, radioactive decay. Uh, and, and weak force is also felt in the nuclear scale, usually. So we don't feel the strong and the weak force in our day-to-day -day life. Coming back to quantum mechanics, <clears throat> now quantum mechanics 
says uh, quantum mechanics are, uh, it works at all scales in nature, but then uh, you can feel them better in, in, in a more powerful way at very small scales for microscopic particles. Okay? Yeah, at these microscopic scales, it turns out every system behaves in a probabilistic way in the sense that if a system has to evolve from one state to the other state, it doesn't evolve in, a, in its classical path. It evolves in all possible paths that are allowed by laws of nature. And each path will have a particular amplitude. And the net probability to travel from one path to the other is actually sum of all amplitudes than the square of it. That is the basic uh, law, law of quantum mechanics. And uh, <clears throat> uh, this could be explained in, in, in the following example. Uh, suppose you have, a <clears throat> you have a screen here where you have two holes okay, and you have a source of light. Mm. If, if you shine light, then a photon coming out of it could uh, go through the first hole and reach somewhere on, on this other screen, or it could move through the second hole and, uh, and reach the screen. Okay? It could do either things. It turns out the photon has a particular amplitude uh, to move through the first hole and reach at a point. And similarly, another particular amplitude to reach to move through the other hole and reach the screen. However, the net probability of the photon to arrive at a particular point on the screen is a superposition of the two amplitudes in the sense that we will first add the amplitudes and then take the square to find what is the net probability. That means if I, if I throw about uh, many million photons, how many, what fraction of them reach at a particular point? Okay. This superposition principle actually le uh, leads to a wave-like interference. Yeah. This is the laws of quantum mechanics. So another way to put it, is that if I have a particle which has to travel from uh, point A at time t1 to point B at time t2, it doesn't take any particular path. It takes all possible paths that are allowed uh, simultaneously. And each path has a contribution to its net probability of traveling from one point to the other. Point. Okay. Now, why do we need to <clears throat> study a quantum theory of gravity? Uh, the reason is the following. <clears throat> So as long as we stick to a very small microscopic scales where we have lighter objects like electrons, protons, subatomic particles, then our particle physics is enough to, to describe such a system. When we go to very large scales in the universe, big objects, planets and stars and galaxies and the entire universe, then classical theory of Einstein, general relativity, is enough to, to explain such a system. <clears throat> However, this, uh, this quantum theory, which, which works at the particle scale or small microscopic scale, has, has, many prob uh, has some problems, some drawbacks. Uh, similarly, gravity, which acts at the, uh, at the largest scales, also has some drawbacks. For example, uh, Einstein's theory predicts that there are some singularities. There are points in space-time where ma masses or energy becomes infinite, curvature becomes infinite. Okay? Now, two of such uh, singularities are the Big Bang singularities in the early universe, which, are, which is a naked singularity in the sense that there is no horizon. Uh, you can directly fall into the singularity. There is no point of no return. So at any point, you can turn back and come back before you hit the singularity. Uh, and then there are black hole singularities, which, which have horizons in the sense that for a faraway observer, uh, <clears throat> if something is falling, it 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 uh, takes about infinite time to reach the horizon. Okay, so so black holes have horizons. So Einstein's theory predicts these singularities. Now, most of the time when we stick to study only lighter objects at small scales or heavier objects at at very very large scales, we do not need. Uh, <clears throat> well, either we we just study uh, particle physics, which is quantum mechanics, or we study Einstein's general relativity, which is classical physics. However, there are situations like the black holes and the Big Bang singularities, where both these things are important. And hence, we need to develop a quantum theory of gravity. Many attempts have been made to develop a quantum theory of gravity. However, none of them have been successful. The most straightforward way and naive attempts actually result in uh, infinities, uh, in processes, uh, which, which govern quantum mechanical process in, in gravity. Okay. So, there, so there are attempts to unify, uh, to put together quantum mechanics and uh, general relativity together. One of the classic uh, effects that happen if you study quantum mechanics 
in in a curved space time around a black hole is that a black hole which is which is a perfect absorber uh, actually becomes uh, not so black the black hole can actually radiate okay this is called hawking radiation it radiates by the following mechanism that uh, we can think of space time around the black hole is made up of virtual particles and antiparticles uh, these pairs are being created and annihilated all the time because of quantum fluctuations and if by a quantum mechanical tunneling if an antiparticle falls into the black hole from the horizon then the particle escapes the horizon and so for, for a far away observer it will seem like that radiations are coming out of the black hole okay. this is hawking radiation now at ayuka researchers are working on uh, this uh, hawking radiation formalism and they have found that uh, the spectrum of particles which come out of the, the black hole are not exactly a black body spectrum which was predicted by hawking but there is a slight correction to it <clears throat> another important aspect to uh, quantum theory of gravity is that <clears throat> even though we study einstein's theory in, uh, in in four dimensions three space and one time space could really have uh, more dimensions so another uh, topic of research at ayuka is that studying gravity at higher dimensions which might actually be able to help us to find a quantum theory of gravity such an example, example of such a theory is string theory, where you have higher space dimensions, but they are smaller in size and curled up, and very tiny small, smaller than even uh, nuclear scale. One other important work which is being conducted at IUCA is that it, it goes under, under the name atoms of space time. Uh, and I can explain it by the following way. So when we look at a solid, it has this elastic property, which is like really a macroscopic emergent property. Okay, but it really comes because of the individual atomic electron interactions. Okay, so the elasticity is an emergent phenomena coming out of very uh, soft, soft structure or atomic structure of the system. Similarly, uh, the, usually the uh, microscopic physics and macroscopic physics is breezed by uh, thermodynamics. It turns out when we look at Einstein's equations, um, then Einstein's equations can can be expressed in the form of uh, a thermodynamic equation uh, TDS equal to DE plus PDV where T is the temperature and uh, S is the entropy <clears throat> associated with any kind of horizon like I talked about black hole horizon and then this PDV is a walk done uh, by uh, a virtual displacement of the horizon so horizons seem like uh, they're like holograms they capture the physics of the volume or the bulk however in two dimensional surfaces so horizons are two dimensional spheres, but they capture the bulk dynamics. <clears throat> the second important thing about uh, thermodynamic interpretation of Einstein's theory is, is that just like uh, elasticity comes up because of uh, some microstructure of a solid, similarly gravity could be emergent because of some atoms of space time. So space time may not be continuous. Uh, it, it may not be a continuum uh, and it may, be, may have some quantum substructure and whose statistical uh, mechanics uh, of, of this substructure is actually giving rise to Einstein's equation as a classical equation on, on larger scales. Thank you.